Hi, everybody. I love that music. That's so great. It's like I have to play the video. Yeah, it makes me want to like do an Irish jig or something. I don't know, or a polka. Somebody said it makes me want to polka. And I was like, okay. <laughs> polka, but I don't know what it is, but it's like. Dun, 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 dun. It, it is like it's a polka. It's just catchy. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. The movie yeah. that I was written for is a bunch of gangsters chasing somebody. It's a comedy. I stand, I stand corrected. <laughs> I don't say polka. But no, I said it is kind of like a polka. That's what I was with the accordion. So it's go. yeah, that's Arthur's music. He 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 gave me that one to use so I wouldn't get blasted anymore. <laughs> there you go. And my son just wrote a new guitar riff. He's working on a song. He was playing it for me on the patio the other day. And I went, oh. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted for my intros. I said, okay, that's mine. He's like, okay, I'll flesh it out for you. I'm like, okay. You know, a lot of people ask why we look down. The reason we're looking down is because we're in shame. Is because we're reading questions off of our iPhones. Exactly. Um, our smartphones or whatever phone you have. No, we're or, not. Or the computer the screen. screen. Don't have no bell. <laughs> My yes, bells, yes. my bells at my office on my desk. That's my, I have my BS bell on my office. Okay, there you go. Well, I don't have a bell, but um, I have a. Let me turn it the right way. I have a bicycle a bell. Ring, ring, ring. Oh, that's yeah, cute. you can hook it to like the handlebar. I've got the books, and hopefully, Mel has the candle. Um, I have booking. No. no. Oh, okay, he's got the pin, so that'll work. <laughs> um, I've got a candle around here somewhere. It's just not close to the desk. I think we don't have a cat. We need a pie whack it. I'm a dog. I can't get mine. It's next to the doll with all the pins in it. What does she call the cat? Her um, it wasn't her particular. What'd she call it? Her familiar. A familiar. Yeah, cats are familiar. Yeah. The cat is a familiar. Oh, and before I forget, Mel. Colleen, the cool crone, wanted me to ask you, what is the date? She wants you to come do a polyterology with us. Okay, but I'll be on, leaving. I'll be leaving June the twentieth. You'll be, you'll be come, you'll be back, you'll be back. Wait, yeah, you'll be back in time because it's not till July fifth. It's on a Friday night. The answer is yes. Okay, folks, I got it taped. <laughs> Unless we're going away, which I don't think so, because we're coming back on the third from Africa. So, <clears throat> um, I will. Let, I will let her know. Africa. And a lot of people have been asking me to do collabs. I've got a lot of emails. Unfortunately, I haven't answered, and here's why: because final payment was due for the Rhine on June the sixth, and I was, um, I was. Uh, getting final payment from everybody 44 people and um so that took up whew, um wow almost a, almost a week or two and then um we're getting ready to go to, to africa so what i do is like about three or four weeks before we leave when everybody gets their travel documents from mayflower cruises and tours um uh, mayflower is not not sponsoring this by the way um it's like all of their uh, airline stuff, their travel documents, all of that. So I, for people who don't live in Chicago, I have a Zoom meeting and I go everything over everything from A to Z. So I did that. And then some people can't attend. So tomorrow night, uh, the people that live here, we go to Mykonos restaurant. No, Mykonos is not sponsoring this. And we do our Zoom party. I mean, our document party there for the people who are leaving from Chicago. So that, and then for the people who couldn't attend the Zoom party, I've got a few more scheduled. So that's why I haven't been doing a lot of YouTube or anything. I Right before we leave, right, it's, it's just hectic. And then um, with 40, I think it's 43, I forget people going on the Rhine uh, about three weeks before we leave. I'll have to break that up into different ones So for Zoom. So I'm not complaining. I love doing it. It's just been very busy. It takes yeah. time. It yeah, it takes time. Uh, and then exactly. I'm to, so you should do a travel log. 
Um, I'm, I do. I take films and stuff. And my friend Nancy Regan, her daughter, Shay, actually taught me how to edit iMovie. So I think this summer, Shay and I are going to uh, kind of work on it. And I'm going to ask Aiden to help uh, and put together a there travel for Africa and all the places we've been. Cool. So. cool. Yep, that'll be fun. Now, Arthur, I might have you write some music for it. So how's that? Sure. <laughs> okay. So that's, that's my stuff. Uh, Arthur, you want to tell them about our event in Chicago? We're having an event in Chicago. <laughs> no, we're not. And I'm not going. It's going to be with Mama Sita <laughs> Linda G. Come. What do I Papa do? Sita Mel, the Aloha Shirt Psychic. I'm sorry. Kevin Chandler and Kevin Lewis. And Kevin Chandler. Kim Copeland. Deanne and myself. And am, am I missing anyone? Um, Linda Grendel. Linda. I said that. Oh, yeah. okay. And then uh, Aiden is going to. Oh, that's right. Aiden's going to be there. Um, He's all of us filmographer. Pictures of Black away. I'm sorry. He's going to be taking all these pictures. When well, we're not looking, he can turn around and blackmail us with them. So that'll be fun. He's going to put it all together and then send it to everybody to put it on their channel. So, yeah. Um, so you know, it's, it's, we have the meeting tomorrow, a Wednesday night for this too. Tomorrow night, don't forget. Mm -hmm. the Zoom meeting. Tomorrow's Tuesday. And, oh, tomorrow's Tuesday. I'm sorry, Wednesday. And tomorrow is Aloha Tuesdays. Yes, but we've got to do that earlier because I have a, I have a, I have the document party meeting at six thirty tomorrow night. So whatever you want to do. Well, are y'all doing it live or are you doing a recording? If you're doing a recording, I, you can do it anytime. I think we'll pre-record it. Okay. Tomorrow night. Um, well, and this is our first time doing Draining the Swamp as a pre-recorded. Um, so we're figuring it out. You're getting a lot of chit-chat and chatter that, well, I guess we normally do this in a live stream anyway, but this is something new to try, and um, we'll see how it goes from here. Um, Anything else coming up for you, Arthur? I know Mel's already kind of laid out his schedule. And you got anything exciting um, coming up? I've got a, a membership meeting live show on Thursdays with my members. And um, still waiting for one of the contest winners to get a hold of me. because she, I had two winners last month for free readings. And then every Tuesday with Mel. And I think I'm on with um, Michelle Marie next Wednesday. And then the following week, I'm on with Val. There you go. There you go. Well, I'm here the tonight. I was directly reading with her, the first one. And she was amazing. So I'm just going to plug her right now because she was great. I can hardly Michelle hear you. Michelle Marie? Do I, who, I'm sorry, what did you, I could hardly hear you. Your I had my first Akashic record reading with Valerie, Dragonfly Crystals. And it was amazing. Yeah. yeah, she did one for me. It blew my socks off. So, uh, so maybe I should get one. Yes, you should. <laughs> they, they burnt my Akashic records a long time ago. Oh, I brought white out. So, there you go. All right, let's get started. I just I, figured. Okay, let's get it over with. <laughs> I got to end. By, I got to end. I've got to end by eight thirty. So, okay, okay, you yeah, got it. Um. Well, tomorrow night I've got a shamanic journeying class that um, I've been training off and on for the last couple of years. And then Wednesday is Sisters and Reveal the Future. And Thursday is Thursday is the Golden Girls. Oh, it's me doing the Golden Girls. Well, <laughs> I didn't notice that. So I got to get busy and get it put together. And then Friday, I'll be a guest on Deanne's channel for her paranormal show. So yay! Cool. For fun. And, um, I fussed at her. I said, "So where the hell is my invitation? How come you haven't invited me to come?" To? She's like, "I didn't know you were into that." She's a I'm sweet. like, "Deanne, I live in the swamp. What do you think?" <laughs> oh my goodness! And Saturday, I went to my very first metaphysical festival. I had never been to one before. And we had our very first one here in my city in Lafayette, and it was fabulous. Um, 
met people from all over the state. We even had a guy from Australia there who brought the didgeridoos, those long the didgeridoo, yeah. Those are yeah, cool. and he was he, he was selling them and he was playing them and it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. I met a lot of really cool people and uh exchanged a lot of information and hopefully next year when they do the next one, I'll be able to be one of the vendors, be one of the readers. Yeah. yeah. Good. So fun. We're working on it. So let's get started, shall we? I've got questions here. I typed mine out so I don't have to try to read it off the screen. Um, let's see. Donna655 wanted to know, what is going on with Judge Alito? Do you think he will be caught in a big lie and have to recuse himself? Love watching all of you. So, well, he was caught in that tape this, that was just released where he's being a white nationalist and uh, Christian I haven't morals seen and all it that yet. kind of stuff. That's going to get him in trouble. Say again, it was a tape of what? I, it was I, a tape that was leaked of Alito talking about Christianity, uh, godliness, and basically that he's a white Christian nationalist. Wow. Mel, lines, turn up your hearing aids. <laughs> they are up. It's just, I don't know what's going on. but So what did he have to say in the tape? Well, somebody was talking to him about, well, I'm a Christian, and I don't think you know we'll ever be able to get this country back together again. And it's that kind of stuff. And he was more or less saying that he agreed and that it's either one side or the other has to win. There's no in between. There's no compromise. Well, the thing that bothers me, the thing that burns my rear end is a candle about that high. <laughs> Bad joke. Uh, and he's one of them. Um, you know, a judge is supposed to be impartial, regardless of their personal belief. So for him to promote uh, the polarization of this country, and we're very polarized, is frightening. Mm -hmm. And if he heard cases about, you know, gay marriage, for example, or obviously Roe v. Wade or other things like that, or, or Jim Crow and stuff like that, that shows that his mind is already made up. And it's frightening to me that there are justices on the Supreme Court that would like to take this country back 70 years. Those days are done. And, you know, just because, and my guides always tell me this, it might seem as if the ultra right wing Christian MAGAs, which is really not Christianity, in my right. opinion, just because they've won a few battles does not mean they'll win the war. Um, you know, you'd think that our Supreme Court would be a Supreme Court for everyone, not just for one little group. And so, you know, he has freedom of speech. He can say whatever he wants. But it shows that he's prejudicial. My guides are showing me that there will be two judges impeached mm -hmm. after the election. And if they're smart, they'll resign because impeach means to bring to trial. But if they're brought to the Senate, they'll be convicted. So two of them. And then one, when it's coming to that, will resign. So um, my feeling is Alito has got himself in some really, 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 really hot water. Mm -hmm. And my guides are telling me he will have to pay the price for that. I did a show last night and I said, and this is before I knew about the tape. And I said, he and uh, Kavanaugh are going to have to step down or get in trouble. And then I felt that uh, I've been saying for a long time, Clarence Thomas, I always felt going down in, in October this year. So we'll see. Yeah. I see. Well, I drew a few cards on it while y'all were talking. The first thing I pulled was King of Pentacles reversed. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> yeah. Followed by the Three of Swords. Ooh, double ouch. Heartache, delay. Followed by the Knight of Swords. So mm. there's going to be a lot of 
a lot of bad juju coming at them and it's going to come fast. It's going to hit them quickly. Um, but, you yeah, know, they're all on the outs. <laughs> I see legislation coming where um, they can no longer take these humongous gifts like this being disclosed right now. And there's going to be people stepping forward to say the dark money and the sources from that. <clears throat> And I see legislation coming forward to say that they can no longer accept any kind of gifts whatsoever. They do it's illegal and they could be immediately taken off the court. I see legislation coming that's going to have uh, term limits for Supreme Court justices. So I see a lot of changes coming as a result of the corruption that's going on within certain justices of this court for entertainment purposes only. Right. Something well, there my was a time when told me. Go ahead. Go ahead. There was a time when Kagan was offered a dozen bagels and she turned them down saying, I can't accept these. And then you have Clarence Thomas accepting, you know, billions or millions rather in gifts. It's crazy. And when they ask him why he didn't disclose it, oh, I forgot. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot, yeah, I forgot that, that cruise I went on. But yet you're got. crucifying Hunter Biden because he said that when he checked the box and bought a gun, he wasn't on drugs. And so you're crucifying him, but yet it's okay. The double standards, I see an end to that. This hypocrisy will end. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've done a couple of readings on this in the past month or so. And the one thing that I keep getting back on it is not only are we going to be replacing two to three people on the court fairly quickly um, that it's going to be brought up to speed by adding more justices to it so that there is one justice for each district court, which is oh, yeah. how it was designed to be. Yeah. So that would be 13 justices. So we get that done after the election and Biden is back in, you know, that's going to, that's going to really help us kind of get the country back on an even keel by getting the nutsos out of office and, uh, and start prosecuting those that have been breaking the laws, you know? Um, well, the reason we have nine is because when they originally voted for it, they had nine courts. So they had right. nine judges. Now we have right. 13. So because... Some of them have double duty, so they have to spread out the 15 minutes. Well, at some point, point, a lot sooner than later, I see Roe v. Wade upheld. Yep. I see gay law. And I getting codified. Gay, I see gay marriage being codified. I see, you know, this whole thing about uh, paying for contraception and all that, that. That We shouldn't even be having th that argument in the Senate. It should be like, okay, you know, if, 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 they won't pay for women's contraception, then why pay for men's Viagra? Exactly. You know, I mean, hey, so I see a lot of issues if, arising from that. If they don't want to provide a plan B pill over the counter at the drugstore, then they need to take all the condoms down too. Correct. Correct. You know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander in my book. I agree. So, um, and if you're going to punish a woman because she decides to get an abortion or gets pregnant out of wedlock, I think that's where they're wanting to push this towards. I'm still waiting to find out, well, what are the punishment for the men that get her in that condition? Well, you know, I think it goes back to the old <laughs> argument from 50, 60, 70 years ago that if a woman gets pregnant, it's her fault, not the man. And it's like, wait yeah. a minute. She couldn't get pregnant without the guy. So, yeah. um that whole rhetoric is going to change. Yeah. Somebody oh, yeah. asked me once, well, what's the number one, what do you think the number one cause of, of um, illegitimate pregnancies, I think is how they put it. And I said, men. I can and they looked at me and they said, excuse me. And I said, well, I said a woman can go out and have all the fun she wants, but until a man, get, a man gets in the picture, there's no worry about having a kid, you know. I can answer that question in two words. The reason there's so many uh, children born out of wedlock is called loose zippers. 
Exactly. Yeah. You know, they want to blame her, but he's the one that can't keep it in his pants where it belongs. So, and anyway, I just saw the uh, the Rolling Stones album "Sticky Fingers" in my head. Remember that? Not touching that. Not a zipper. Jail. No, no. I just said it was a zipper. That's all. I had high school. Like a sticky we widget. Moved, we moved forward. <laughs> Yes, we're moving forward. Next question. <laughs> okay. Do one of y'all have a question on your list, or you want me to just keep you going with the ones I printed up? I think you've got the ones that people ask on mine, so go ahead. I don't care. <laughs> okay. Um, my allergies are really bad today, so if I'm doing this and more my eyes, okay. because... Uh, yeah, you're cool. Don't worry about it. Um, okay, there was one, Arthur, on your community page. Mm -hmm. It said, when will there be consequences for deliberate disinformation? After the election. Because there's still lawsuits pending with a certain yeah. news group. Yeah. And, you know, it's going to, then they're like, they topple and then all the rest topple. Yeah. But you can't yell fire in a theater. And that's basically what they're doing. Right. And it, uh, they need to get the money out of the news organization. You know, we didn't have this problem pre-Fox, you know, because the news wasn't, um, or I should say maybe pre-CNN before uh, what's-his-name started that up, Ted Turner. Uh, <laughs> it was, the news was something that was studios and stuff were expected to fund the news without there being any strings attached, supposedly. Um, because once they let the money flow in, yeah, that's worked out real good, hasn't it? Well, I'm a little bit different on that. I remember when if a, if a channel put up um, a commercial for one party, they had to put up a commercial for the other party. Right. Yeah. And so that was, I think, I think it was a rule or a law or something. I don't know if it was. But then all of a sudden, I think, I don't know if it was during the Reagan years or wherever, they did away with that. And yeah. that's at the stage for all this BS. I think the downfall... Uh, or it could have been the downfall of this country for entertainment purposes only. Uh, you know, Rupert Murdoch, is he from Australia, I think? Or I forget yes. where he's from. Mm -hmm. But they didn't want him there. And they certainly yeah. didn't want him in Canada or in Great Britain. And so he created havoc in Australia when he came here and, and started certain news channels that um, were less than, I won't, well, never mind. Uh, that caused that I think that was the the beginning um, of what we're seeing now. Well, don't forget when we had General Rosa Pope owned the National Enquirer many, many years ago, and Rupert Murdoch decided he wanted to compete with them and he opened he started Star Magazine. I mean, Robin Leach was his original gossip columnist, and then he bought all the Fleet Street reporters over from London. And the rest is history. So I think there's a difference between disinformation and slander and inflammatory behavior. Mm -hmm. Disinformation has been used since the dawn of humankind. You know, yeah. uh, the KGB was masters at it, the CAA or masters at it. They do it all the time. I'm not saying it's right. So I don't think you can legislate that. What I do think, though, is what's going to happen is there's going to be things coming through to say in, in the way that, because in order to prove, prove slander or, or, or uh, inflammatory behavior, it's hard because you, you have to say they lied and they knew they lied. Mm -hmm. that makes it so difficult. I see that changing a little bit. And there's going to be yeah. a lot more lawsuits coming against some of these mm -hmm. politicians and some of these public figures and some of these so-called news outlets that are really propaganda arms. Um, yeah. And these people are going to win these humongous lawsuits and companies are going to be suing them and winning. And I think when you start hitting them in the pocket, deep 
pocket wins. That'll that'll stop a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, well, they allow things. journalists to be journalists again. You know? Well, years ago, like things like you know certain tabloids that was called yellow journalism. Yeah. Back when I was in high school studying journalism and in college, I took some some journalism classes. It was called yellow journalism. It was, you know, the, it was that when you when you write a story, it was the inverted pyramid and all that stuff, you know. And because in those days, when you have to cut a story, you actually had to take a stiletto and cut it and paste it on a page, you know. Um, and so you kept all the pertinent stuff at the top and it's kind of the other stuff at the bottom. So if you had to cut it, at least you got the pertinent stuff. But it was supposed to be impartial. It was we were taught it was like a camera and you're just using words to report the story. Unfortunately, that's changed. So nowadays, what they're calling news is really op-ed. You know, it really yeah. is uh, opinion editorial, and that's not news. And so I see us getting back to reporting the news. The local stations here in Chicago, all of them, do a great job of reporting the news. A lot of local stations do. And I yeah. see national news getting back to that. Mm -hmm. Slowly, but sure. It was like CNN fired Don Lemon. Now, I've watched him off and on for decades since he's been on the air. And I always thought of him as being a good talking head, and he seemed to try to get his facts straight. But now he's got his own thing going on YouTube um, where he's doing a live stream every afternoon, and he's doing hard news, and it is completely unvarnished. I mean, he's, he's calling it out like, well, Look what happened when you finally unleashed one of the beasts to come out and start talking truth. And um, it's really it's it's really inspiring to see. And I'm hoping some of the other journalists that, you know, that really want to get out there and tell the truth. I'm hoping that they'll maybe take the hint and just go in and do their own thing. You know, it's well, it's, I think um, years ago, a lot of newscasters had integrity they have professionalism and they had decorum and yeah. now it's just gone out the window now it's just all about sensationalism and all of that stuff but um there's no more walter cronkites no unfortunately mm -mm. or edward morrow how do what do walter cronkite say and that's the way it is yeah yeah um he was good you know and yeah we used to watch him every night so, oh yeah, yeah everybody did uh huntley brinkley report remember that mm -hmm. Um, I, I think, you know, Ted Koppel was good on Nightline. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, just, I always enjoyed watching Dan Rather. Yep. I just see it coming back to some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Getting back to so, your talking about reporting. I'm sorry? Gene Dixon, when you're talking about reporting and writing a story, Gene Dixon often complained that she would write predictions send it off to the newspapers and it would come back totally different because they would tell her, Oh, we're not counting words. We're counting inches. We have to, we have so many inches to write. And they would take words and change the words with this. They thought was the same meeting which would change the predictions completely. No, we used so, to count words, not sentences. No, I'm saying, but the newsprint nowadays, it's all by inch. It's not by words. Right. We count by so words. Many words too much. Like, and you would just count the words in the sentence and then how many columns it was and, and figure on X amount of words per, per sentence and then mm -hmm. take times the columns. And But we, we here again, it was put all the important stuff at the top and yeah. then things that just are filler toward the bottom. So if you had to cut it. The, the history at the end and the story the, at the top. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that one. Okay. Okay, let's see. Um I like this one. Getting getting it right 2024. Love y'all. Just out of curiosity, what did y'all predict for 2016 election? I predicted that Hillary Clinton would win. And mm -hmm. I went on Fox News here in Chicago and said she'd win. Um and in my opinion, she did win. She won the popular vote. Yeah. And I think had Russia not interfered, she would have won. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, when they released those 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 tapes or whatever it was two weeks before the election, yeah. I looked Trump. at Gary and I said, you know what? Trump just won. 
And I remember it was the day or a couple of days before election day. And I said, no self-respecting gay man would go on the news and say that Trump was going to win. <laughs> Um, well, I told everybody at the time that I felt Hillary is going to win, but Trump is going to get in. I just, I felt that Hillary would win. That's all I felt. And, and, she, did I was on track. and she did win. Yeah. Um, but this time, I don't feel that. This time, it's going to be a close race, and we're not out of the woods. Trump could win. But, yeah. But in order to keep that from happening, Everyone must get out and vote. No excuses. Yes. The only excuses in a hospital bed are near death or death. No excuse. If we don't, gonna, if we're going to keep our democracy, you must vote. You can't do what Sherry talks about in Louisiana. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was just getting ready to say, take a hard look at what happened to us last summer when nobody showed up to vote and we got a MAGA governor now. And we have now to vote we have, like our life just, depends on it because it does. Period. Yeah. It does. Exactly. I, it really does. Well, I decided, exactly. Let's see. Um, uh, Suki Lal says, hello, I love this promo. That's really good. The promo is neat. Uh, I do have a question. How is the West Virginia Senate race looking? Will it be Republican or Democratic that wins in November? Please and thank you. West Virginia. Isn't that where Manchin is? Yeah, um, I, I think so. I think but... Democrats are going to squeak by. I mean, it's going to be a really razor thin margin. Well, Manchin is running as an independent. I right. Think. So that but could the question was Democrat the Republicans. I got Republicans doing trying to do stuff underhanded, but getting caught. I, I'm sorry. You have to... I, I got the Republicans may try something underhanded, but they'll get caught. But in the long run, it's going to be very tight. But I'm getting Democrat win. Yeah, um, I'm I'm not sure who's running, but the first thing I pulled was the Ten of Swords. So that it's going to be painful, whatever happens. So I guess no, it depends on which side you're pulling for. But I'm seeing that as, I don't think the Republicans are going to be able to take it. I really don't. Then I got the two of cups. So there's heavy decision that the people in West Virginia, that they need to really sit down and take stock of who's offering what, who's promising what. And then I got the magician. So you got to be careful because, I mean, for entertainment purposes only, you do, but the Republicans are very good at using all of the little tricks and, and whatnot of the trade to get their way. Well, I'll say it this way. And I think here's where we can respectfully agree to disagree. If Manchin wasn't an independent, he could very well get it, which is almost like giving it to a Republican. Um, he'll take away votes. You know, but here again, if a Republican wins in West Virginia, it doesn't concern me all that much because I still see us taking over the House and the Senate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these states that were traditionally red, you know, they were going to, all the MAGAs were, oh my God, it's going to be a red wave, a red tsunami. And it wasn't even a pink drop, you know, it wasn't yeah. even a trickle. So that's a bellwether, I think, of what's going to go in the House and the Senate and the presidential race. But in West Virginia, I don't know. I either think it's Manchin or the Republican. And if I'm wrong, I will eat crow. I promise I will eat crow. <laughs> Well, and if you think about it, there's not that much difference between the two. There isn't. There really isn't. Yeah. You know, so Manchin is just as willing to sell everybody down the river as the Republican is, as long as the money's going in his pocket. You know, so. Um, I'd rather see him get it than a MAGA. Mm -hmm. 
often. And I'm, yeah. not, I'm not a mansion fan at all, at all. No, no. But um, there was one here by Lady Day, 5817, who said uh, 45 had to meet with his parole officer today. His lawyer, Todd Blanche, was with him. During these meetings, one normally should show some understanding of the crimes they committed and have some remorse. <laughs> uh, yeah, like that's going to happen. Um, so did 45 act condescending and downright nasty to the civil servant parole officer today? If so, how will the parole officers report to the judge depict 45. I think the fact it that he's for less than a half, half hour. hour woman. I'm waiting. You're, I, I'm, I'm sorry. You're both talking, so I couldn't hear. I said it lasted, le the meeting lasted less than a half hour over Zoom. Yeah. Well, here's the thing that frosted my rear end about it. Other than a Chicago cold winter, which will do it to anybody. Um, okay. They need a candle. Um, when, if that were one of us, Trump, when he was convicted, he was supposed to meet with the, uh, probation officer right then and there, or he just mm -hmm. left the courthouse. Well, if I were the judge, I would have said, uh, uh, I'm not putting up with that. But Mershon is being very, very careful because he doesn't want to give any fodder to have this overturned on, on appeal. And it won't be, um, Unless the Supreme Court gets involved, but if they do, it's really a slippery slope. Anyway, mm -hmm. so when he met with the pro probation officer, I didn't really hear it. I don't think he was condescending. I don't think he said too much because his lawyers probably told him to keep quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that whoever the, asked the question, when the probation officer reports to the judge is going to say that he didn't really show any remorse for the crimes. And that's not going to bode well. Um, no. And it doesn't matter about the political affiliation of the probation officer, because this probation officer is smart enough to know they put politics out of and do their job. Yeah. Albeit, I do, my psychic light bulb just went on, okay. and I'm going bling, and I think some of Trump's people under the table are going to try to get to the probation officer for entertainment purposes only. And that person oh, yeah. reported to the judge. That <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what I, I just I just I love the fact that everything. his parole officer is a black woman. <laughs> love it. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, could, as every could woman's saying, the women be, are going to bring him down. Yeah. I couldn't hear what you He's said. I've been saying that. As everyone's been saying, women are going to be his downfall. Well, I've been saying that all along. The women will bring him down. And Stormy and the fact was, that, And the fact that uh, Spirit keeps putting black women in his path who have power over him, I think is just the coup d'etat of all. You know, it's like, par, it's like oh, yeah. Just oh, he was chef's kiss to that. He was hopping there. The first time she doesn't do what he wants, if he goes opening his mouth, oh, she's against me. She's she's touched by Biden. She's this, she's that. She won't quit. She is going to come out like, oh, my God. She'll be professional. But, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, the judge takes the recommendation of the probation officer as to whether or not that, per that person should go to jail. Mm -hmm. And he's going to miss yeah. probation meetings one too many times. And I, I, I see her with a with a with a uh, a clipboard checking things off every time he does something. He's gonna miss his probation meeting one too many times, and she'll report everything to the judge, and that's her job. But if he starts vilifying her, it's not gonna be pretty because the judge will issue a gag order to protect her as well. Yeah. Well, and and he's already pushing to. Um have the, the gag order removed now that the conviction is over. It's not going to you know, happen. That gag like, order is going to stay in place. No, 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 no. Now, if only we could get them to keep it on him. <laughs> they will. They will. I mean, physically, if they could like stick a ball gag in his mouth and 
put a padlock behind his head and literally Trump, keep him from talking, that would be wonderful. But, when Trump starts accusing other people of doing stuff, it's for that's things. That's what he's doing. Bad. Like when yeah. he said that he's going to, or somebody said that they're going to, if he wins, that they're going to uh, try to prosecute Joe Biden for criminal acts. What criminal acts has Joe Biden committed? Zero. All right. Uh, he so won an election. That's all he did. Right. So basically Trump is telling on himself. Like when Hillary was running against him and he said, well, if I were president, you'd be in jail. He was talking about Hillary. Ah, <laughs> well, Mr. Trump, everything he blamed Obama for doing and Hillary for doing and now Biden, mm -hmm. crap he's done. Well, look at him saying Sleepy Joe and he's the one that fell asleep in court. Well, he can say Sleepy Joe, but, you know, then Joe Biden can come back with at least I'm not dozing Don. Exactly. And he did. He actually did say that. I know. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. <clears throat> um, I just thought of a cartoon. If Donald Trump wins him going to sleep with his elbow on the nuclear trigger. <laughs> somebody, should, somebody should do a cartoon. If I could draw, I'd do it. Any cartoonist yeah, out there? They realize they've, they've dismantled. It's just a button. <laughs> I say that's how they ought to punish him is give him a fake phone. And make him think that he's just tweeting and texting everybody. And it goes nowhere, you know. Because that would be more effective than putting him behind bars. Would be taking away his ability to BS well, through social media. That's exactly what's going to happen. They are going to limit his ability to do that. And that is going to also be part of his downfall. Because it's going to drive him nuts. Not right. like then, literally nuts, but well, like, he already is. So, but entertainment book is I don't think he's nuts. I think he's a sociopath and a psychopath, and I think he's very dangerous because he'll stop yeah. at nothing. Yeah, but usually when you go to jail, you don't bring your laptop and your cell phone with you. Well, exactly, he's been able to, but not. I mean, unless he gives a lot of cigarettes to somebody. <laughs> No, he'll just offer. Or he'd probably have to give more than that, but we're not going to discuss that end of him. He'll so, just offer, um, he'll just offer a bunch of stuff that once he's out, he won't follow through with. That's all. That's what he always does. Yeah, I've got all some I can gold say sneakers is sneakers that would fit you nicely. All I can say for him is don't drop the soap. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, keep I'm a not, tight not grip on that I'm soap bar. <laughs> <laughs> um okay let's see ah uh, here we go what is the future for katie porter <clears throat> where will this strong force of nature bring her whiteboard next um wait i gotta well unfortunately she's running against adam schiff and i feel adam schiff is gonna win yeah i do too but her days are not over. She's going to show up in government one way or another. In two years, she's going to take everyone by storm. That's why because I'm getting. It's I, I, you know I love the way she puts things because she has a she has that unique way of bringing it home in such a way that every person, no matter how illiterate you might be gets it you know except for the rich money people that sit in her <laughs> sit and just look at her with that deer in the headlights look like well even if katie fake, porter i mean <laughs> even if katie porter loses uh i see at some point her in a high level government position so it could mm -hmm. be uh wait she, as adam schiff is running for senate um uh, right in california Okay, yeah. but if she if he beats her out, okay, mm -hmm. maybe she should run for the house. Um, well, but I still see her in a high level government position, and whether it's appointed or elected, I don't know. But um, I'll tell you. Well, when he's going to continue my, formidable. My little oh 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 just came on like your light bulb, and what I was getting is something that I actually feel she may end up. Like with uh, Elizabeth Warren on that level. 
with financing. Yeah. And banking. That's and who trained that. her. That was her yeah. men, that was her mentor. That's who trained her yeah. in college. She was Elizabeth Warren's student. I love Elizabeth. Yeah, no. She's cool. Elizabeth Warren has yeah. got brass, you know what? She's not mm -hmm. she, She's like yeah. bring more than Josh Holly. Oh, yeah. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> she's got them and she's not afraid to use them. That's for sure. Here's um, a question for you, um, Sherry. From mm, Kimmy okay. J. The Louisiana governor, Jeff Laundry, has been signing Landry. one terrible bill after another into law. Will this backfire on him and he'll only serve one term? God, I hope so. I think it will. I really do. Because he's doing things that even Republicans like. Like one of the first things he, he set out to get rid of and signed off on was to end the school lunch programs for kids. Now, this is a federal program. The federal government pays for everything. All they ask of the states that participate was to cover half of the administrative cost, which is a drop of the bucket. And what it did was it guaranteed that every child that's in K through 12 school gets a hot meal every day. Whether school's in session or not, they get a hot meal. And it's very, very popular. Both parties across the board that was one of the first things he went said about axing, and there were some ticked off people about it. Big What's time. his last name? Landry. We'll call him one term Landry. Um, there you go. I only see he's him he's he comes from this long established family name in this state, and you know he's uh, he was our attorney general for our previous governor's second term. He was the AG. And uh, Governor Landry was one of the first AGs to sign on to the Stop the Steal bill that started getting passed around. So and even after he won the governor's position, I still keep seeing him getting taken down for that alone. He's going to be taken down for a lot. I see him yeah. one term. Um, and yeah. the next governor I see is going to be a Democrat. Um, people will come out to vote in droves. Uh, yeah, and, because he took them by surprise. Nobody showed up this last time. And, and whoever, they held the vote on a Saturday. And whoever runs and wins will reinstate that lunch program and overturn a lot of things that Landry has done. So, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, here again, my he, guy is saying, my guides tell me it, it might look like he'll win a few battles, but he won't win the war. Right. Mm -hmm. I see Louisiana going purple because of Landry, actually. So at the end of the day, what he's doing right now really reeks. It's horrible. It actually is horrid. But at the end of the day, once he's gone, you get a governor that's going to start reinstating a lot of those social programs because people really need them. Uh, in a way... He woke people in Louisiana up to say, get up off your duffs and go vote, because if you don't, here's what can happen. So at the yeah. end of the day, in a strange roundabout way, uh, it'll help turn Louisiana purple, which uh, at the end of the day uh, wakes a lot of people up. And the ultimate end <laughs> is good because you'll get a governor in who will really want and work for the good of the people of Louisiana. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just surviving until that happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if, if some of how old is Landry? How old is he, Landry? Uh, he's probably around my age. Um. I would say he's probably in his early 60s, late he, 50s, early 60s. I mean, he really needs to watch his health. That's why I asked how old he was, not because of his age, yeah. but he really needs to keep an eye on his health. So, okay. Sherry, can you stop 
can you start like handing him hamburgers? Just start handing him hamburgers and junk food for lunch. Thanks. Everybody send Landry butter. Big stick of butter. Butter. Some butter. Yeah. Well, and he comes from farming people, so you know, he probably doesn't eat well anyway because you know he's he's gonna eat all the the gumbo and the etouffee and the crawfish pies and the you know, all that stuff that is so horrible for you that we all eat down here, which is why you could roll me down the hall. So um. <laughs> just make sure he has seconds. Too many carbs. Yeah, lots, lots and lots. A lot of rice. Um, a lot of rice. In fact, I think that's what his family, I think his family was rice farmers. They might have been wow. rice farmers. I don't remember. Um, I just know he's an embarrassment. <laughs> Most people are like, oh, didn't your governor do that? I'm like, yeah, let's not talk about it. We can we can laugh about it after we get them out of there. Louisiana will get their voice back and say we're not going to yeah. these shenanigans. Not going to happen. Well, it'll be nice if the Democrats and the independents in Louisiana get beyond the point that when they tell somebody, um, I'm, "I'm a Democrat," you know, it's not something to hide or be ashamed of. Well, there's they need be to learn to say it proudly and loudly. There's going to be a leader coming to Louisiana who's going to be uh, very outspoken against some of the stuff Landry's done and is going to be really charismatic. Uh, Good. Win. Uh, hmm. Even if they say they're a Republican, uh, they're more Democratic. But I don't think so. I see a Democrat governor in Louisiana, and I see Louisiana turning purple. Good, 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 good. I mean, our last our last governor was a Democrat. He was a very conservative Democrat, a very Catholic Democrat, but he really helped to get a lot of programs going here in the state that a lot of people really, really liked. And um, they're not real happy with the fact that Landry has been busting his nether parts to undo everything he can as quickly as he can so you know that happened in kentucky some years ago there was um mm. this ultra right wing uh governor and then brashear beat him uh and brashear yeah, i remember that his dad was a democrat too and brashear is a really good governor for kentucky he really is uh, i like him andy yes. he's very good um in illinois we have pritzker uh, my jury's out on him but <laughs> We call him Fred Flintstone. Yeah. I mean, I lived in Texas back in the day when Texas was blue. When we had Ann Richards for governor. You know, we had all kinds of programs and stuff. Ann Richards, won stuff that was because Ann Richards won that race because what happened, the governor, uh, when they were campaigning, she wanted to shake his hand and he refused to shake her hand. And that helped put her in the, in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the governorship of uh of Texas. I met her at the airport once and at Bergstrom and she was a nice, nice, nice lady. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I see she Abbott. Was. Well, I don't know if he can run again, but I see Texas going purple. That's uh, a lot sooner than later. I see Abbott eventually in a jumpsuit. You see who? I see Abbott, Abbott. in a jumpsuit. With <laughs> Ken Paxton. Hopefully it's pink. Hopefully it's orange. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Nothing fashionable. Or they could do like the former sheriff in, in Maricopa County in Arizona did and put him in a hot pink neon uh, jumpsuits that they wore in jail. He, he made all the prisoners wear neon, hot pink, neon jumpsuits. And gave them food that was half rotted. Mm -hmm. uh, and they didn't even have a jail. He was putting them in yeah, tents, tents out in the desert where it was 115, 120 degrees. Oh, yeah. And they were having prisoners drop like flies. I mean, it was horrific what they were doing to these people. Well, it's they, like they're a criminal. They're not, you know, they're. And isn't it don't funny? Get me going on that tangent. And isn't it funny after how he treated criminals? He was engaged in criminal activity. He was convicted. Himself. And then Trump pardoned him. So, yeah, 
and he's been very quiet, but I want to tell you something. He's, he, he hasn't, he's going to end up going to jail too. I said Bannon was going to end up going to jail and here we are. And Bannon's going to have to go to, uh, he's going to be tried and convicted on other things as well. Oh, yeah. What was that sheriff's name in Maricopa County? I can't remember his name, but he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, yeah, he's going to end up in jail. I'm going completely blank on it. And, and you know what? If somebody did that to him, he'd be the first yelling. Joe. Uh, what was it beginning with an A or something? I can't think of his name, but I but I know he's going to have lots of legal issues coming up. Uh, yeah. Here. Arpeo. Joe Arpeo. Oh. Well. Yeah. The minute, the minute Arthur said A, it was flashed. I was like, yeah, okay. That Now I got it. If somebody makes him sleep in a tent at 110 degrees, he'd be hollering until there's no tomorrow. So, anyway. Tell me about it. But I see him convicted, and I see him in jail. Our pay I'm talking about. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here first, folks. Okay, we got time for one more. Then I got to run. <laughs> okay. I've got, will the SCOTUS drop a load of awful decisions on us at the end of June? Like the, the Trump immunity, Mifid Pristone, Chevron, the January 6th insurrections. They've got a lot of court cases that have been sent before them. And their session ends in June and they don't come back until was it, October, November, something like that. It's like, it must be nice to take that long of a vacation. But um, there are a lot of people that are worried about what they're going to come out with before they take off well I, summer vacay. I think on the um on the immunity thing they'll kick it back down to chuck and she'll have to hear arguments on what's private what's presidential and then um she'll say okay this is presidential this wasn't blah 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 trump will appeal that they're not going to mm -hmm. hear arguments on it until october and then they're going to say well we're not going to issue our opinion on it or our decision until like uh, December. So that's just kicked the can until after the election. But they're, they're not going to give him complete immunity. I do not see that at all. And I see a new court saying, wait a minute, we're going to sit here and look at these kinds of cases one more time and define what is and what is not presidential immunity based on the merits of the case. These, these, some of those justices didn't do that. So I'm not worried about that. But, you know, people are going to be really hopping angry about a lot of these decisions coming down this June from the Supreme Court. But remember, then what's going to happen, it's just going to um, cause people, most of us, to say, wait a minute, we have had it. We're not putting up with this. We're going to get out and do yeah. something. <laughs> it's going to put a fire under our butts. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Well, I'm the potty, potty mouth psychic. So. <laughs> I was just trying to be quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's all the questions I got. So, what do you all think about? What do you all think about? Scorpius? Scorpius? I feel the immunity. Yeah. Go ahead. You're not going to get blanket immunity. The abortion pill, I think they may say that, oh, that's a state thing. And the Chevron, I'm not sure about Chevron. I'm not sure. So I'm not going to answer that. Okay. No matter what, someone's going to be pissed off. Right. Yeah. And I'd rather be their side <laughs> than my side. Are we doing this Just next week? Sir, are we doing no. this next Monday? No. no, uh, our next scheduled show would be on the 24th, but you'll be in Africa, be in so Africa. um, and Arthur's gonna be that's his night with Marina and Allie. So, unless I find a couple of people to come on with me that are free, mm -hmm. we may just skip it and then wait until the wait until July. All right, and so I will see uh, Arthur, I'll see you tomorrow. Sherry, I'll talk to you between now and then, but um, we'll be back in July. Okay. Absolutely. I love doing this. Bye, everybody. I really love doing this. I look forward to it.
I do too. I'm oh, so glad too. y'all agreed to come on with me. This is this is really a lot of fun. Yeah, it's kind of, it's I got a lot of feedback. Everybody's saying y'all do so good together, and I'm like, oh, well, like, thank you. It's kind of like the Sherry Arthur Mel Hour or something. I like it. Yeah, I like it. So, all right, I love you all. All those people watching, thank you for supporting us. Aloha, namaste. And I have to go because I got a boatload of stuff to do because. Uh, He's going to Africa. <laughs> well, I've also got stuff from my other trips too, and I'm working on a lot of stuff for the event here in Chicago. Plus, you got your event coming up. So, yeah, I'm so real to... fast. Subscribe, like, share, leave comments. Press the, the bell. bell. Press the bell. Press the bell. Yes, yes, yes. You must do that. All right. And these two gentlemen both have memberships, so join. Join. <laughs> I don't have mine yet, but it's coming. There you go. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Bye everybody.